You're listening to a Mint podcast brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello everyone and welcome back to Why Not Mint Money. I'm Shashin from Mint's personal finance team and today we talk about the concept of financial independence and retire early. For this, I've invited Karan Datta, former chief business officer of Access Mutual Fund. Karan tells us why and how he retired early at the age of 48 and what keeps him occupied now. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started with your money journey. Hi Karan, thanks for coming to the Why Not Mint Money show. So Karan, you have a interesting life, uh, at least according to me. So you were the chief business officer of Access Mutual Fund, which is amongst the largest mutual fund houses. But you took an unexpected mm. turn. So you retired at the age of forty-eight, uh, and you decided to pursue this thing, which many people popularly call the fire movement. So let's start by that. What, according mm. to you, is fire? <laughs> if you can simplify that for our listeners. Uh, thanks. Question for having me uh, over to discuss this uh, important topic. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, you're right. I left everything at 48, and perhaps at the peak of my career, because around 48, 50 is when <clears throat> you tend to be at the very top of the corporate world. And uh, but then this was not an overnight decision. That had been it had been on my mind for a while, uh, and perhaps as early as age 40 uh, is when I had started thinking about it. So. you know it's it takes time to reach the stage of leaving everything or at least leaving active corporate life uh, it it did take me 7 or 8 years to because it like it's a combination of obviously uh having the finances in order and also knowing what you want to do with your time and all of this has to come together to kind of take the plunge and move on for me the definition of fire uh, of financial independence is actually ownership of time because i've come to the conclusion that the most expensive item is actually time it's more expensive than money and concepts like fire allow you to buy time and what you then do with your time matters most so it's really important to know that even if you're financially independent and you do kind of take a break from the corporate world it's very important to know that you bought time and hence what do you want to do with the time i think that's the essential concept behind fire karan this is interesting so, uh, when you were working at access and many of this asset management company you were in the top you know kind of position and you were uh, for obvious reason a very busy person but what do you do after you retire i mean what's the plan you know so Uh, this is when we were talking ahead of this podcast. You said you live the college life. So, what does it mean yes, when a fifty-two-year-old, you know, lives a college life? Actually, that is true. I, I, and that I, I mean, very seriously, it's a college life because uh, I play for six hours and study for three hours in a day. So that's typically what a college kid does. I don't mean to say that I'm, I'm like kind of aiming to do that. It just so happened. and uh, so the anchor around our day both for me and for my wife the anchor is about fitness and we do spend a lot of time between various activities uh, on keeping physically fit so i do spend 2 to 3 hours in the gym and then i play a sport during the day so literally anything between 4 to 6 hours is about physical fitness and so it's like a nice long drawn process and after 6 hours you do need you do need a little bit of a break and so there's rest time and in the evening anything after 7 onwards is study time so i do listen to a lot of podcasts and channels and read a bit uh, so that's another 2 to 3 hours so literally i have a 9 hour schedule in a day but it has nothing to do with uh, working it has everything to do with workout and studying which is why i call it uh, literally the student life the college life and um, you also play a sport right uh, apart from workout that you told me what is it exactly about so currently i started playing last 2 to 3 years i just started learning and now i'm slightly better at the game of golf slightly 
I'm getting better at it. The idea was that I need to challenge myself both mentally and physically to learn a new sport. It is a sport of which I had no idea. And uh, um, I've just started playing this. So, uh, so this is to keep improving my skill. Uh, golf is a very... I mean, it's a completely different sport. It's not a physical sport. It's, uh, it's actually... The entire game is over in about 40 seconds but you walk for 3 hours mm -hmm. uh, so it's a completely different sport from what I love doing my actual sport is printing now and uh, it's a very that's a very de physically demanding sport uh, so I'm, I would like to prepare for sprinting etc and at some stage maybe even represent India in my age category well, so that's the preparation I'm doing professionally and to learn a new sport is golf. So sprinting is my core and golf is uh, to keep myself mentally active. This is, an, uh, this is a very interesting thread of that. As you also mentioned that 50 to 60 is when you are at the top of your corporate cycle. That's you can true. maximize your earnings. But this is also the time when uh, you, if you want to, then you can focus so much on your health, other finer yeah. aspects of life. And you decided to take the, you know, uh, plunge to the second option. But Karan, I'm yeah. wondering, this this must have taken a lot of consideration uh, in terms of, you know, how much money I would have to save. Uh, basically, the uh, financial aspect. So, uh, yeah. you, you said you decided to retire thought about retiring when you were 40 and you retire actually retired at the <clears throat> age of 48 mm -hmm. so how mm -hmm. how was the financial planning like in this eight odd years you know how did you go about accumulating the corpus that you have now so that you can retire for the rest of your life yeah so one thing i just want to say that a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on the financial corpus true and that's correct that's the right thing to do but they don't think too much about the reason why they want to leave and hence they accumulate all the money but don't know what to do with the money or with the time so I, I, I'm just kind of you know making this very clear that it's not just about money it's also about how you spend uh, both money and time uh, as far as uh, my journey is concerned, uh, I just want to make it also very clear that I've had a financial advisor or MFD by my side for 20 odd years now. Many people find that very surprising that coming from the mutual fund industry, I would have a financial advisor. In fact, that's another suggestion for everyone. Always have a good MFD by your side because see, there's that much. I, I can only think and visualize all this, but you need someone who can actually put it in practice because... Sometimes we get carried away with market behavior, ups and downs. So I've always believed that having a good uh, advisor by your side helps. And over the years, that has really immensely helped me and my family. As far as the entire accumulation phase was concerned, it, it so I had a number in mind uh, at 40. Uh, I had put a number in mind that let's assume that if I hit, let's say 10 crores, I'll walk out. Uh, but obviously at 40 that I was nowhere near that number but one thing happened is that uh, as time went by what got added to my revenue lines was there was a salary there was a bonus but we also got stock options so one of the things that people tend to miss out is that the third line is very important uh, so and that really can help accelerate the process of wealth creation so the stock options well if you get stock options and the company goes nowhere it's pointless uh, you could have had stock options of jet airways and or whatever <laughs> the company is no longer existent uh, so for example you know uh, at the time of the financial crisis some of my closest friends were at Citibank and the stock kind of just plummeted uh, so it so the point I'm just trying to make is why stock options do create wealth, but you've got to be at the right place at the right time. And in this case, I happened to get the stock options with the right place at the right time. 
and they created some amount of corpus and finally i could decide to move and just to add the session it's not just a third line there was obviously an sip that i was doing regularly so over 20 years there was an accumulation also of money but a big chunk of came through uh, the stock options got it. and karan uh, now when you're retired uh, do you have any uh, side income or any such thing where it is a part time indulgence for you is there anything as such yeah i'm on the boards of a couple of companies and then i get a lot of speaking assignments because i speak on geopolitical events and their economic impact uh, so the board assignments are obviously i do it purely because of the people involved so i'm on the boards of edelweiss mutual fund and prudent corporate both are both i've been very closely associated with the people uh, running the businesses radhika at edelweiss and sanjay bhai at prudent so as I now believe that I want to only work with those set of people who I can relate to. So yes, the board positions help me, and uh, 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 and then it keeps me mentally active as far as the industry is concerned. And then I get some of these speaking assignments. But but even if none of this existed, I would uh, still kind of you know uh, be on the path of financial freedom. Well. um so current this is my uh, small observation that i have so a lot of people are you know uh, they have the typical corporate life and once they retire you know it 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 would get difficult for them to join the industry again so they do a lot of planning as such but i'm assuming since you are actively in board positions of companies uh, if in case you wanted you could easily join the industry back again right um easily so that must give uh, have given you some comfort i think regarding you yeah, know I taking mean, this plans of retirement yeah and uh, i think there there's complete clarity in my head that i don't want to come back <laughs> not because i don't love the industry i love the industry it's just that i love my freedom as well um uh, more than anything else finally you get one shot at life and uh, so so it's not as if i haven't worked i worked for 28 long years so yeah after that i reached after that i reached here so but the point is also important that please don't overspend your time at working the message that i want to give to everyone don't overspend your corporate time if you reached a corpus which you think is good enough A, don't don't aim for like so much money that you end up working till sixty five. You lose your best years, and once you hit a certain number, eighty percent of what you wanted, then start taking. It's a very courageous decision to make because it involves the family. Because suddenly you just you know, in society also people don't take it very. It's not just a normal thing. And when I tell people that I don't do anything, they they. They look at me with, oh, okay. Now what is that supposed to mean? Um, so, Karan, Karan, so, can you tell us some instances where uh, you went to a gathering or something, and when you had to introduce yourself, you would say, before you would say, "I'm the chief yeah. business officer of Access Mutual Fund." But now, what do you say, and what was the what's the reaction like? You know, I'll tell you exactly what I say. I tell everyone that nowadays I'm jobless, I'm unemployed. and i am uh, <laughs> india's youth <laughs> so i'm jobless unemployed youth <laughs> india's number one problem <laughs> uh, no i mean on a on a but actually to be honest whenever i tell people that nowadays i play and i enjoy life they no one has ever reacted by saying oh that doesn't make sense i've never come across someone saying oh really how how but the, there's a lot of curiosity on how did that happen there's a lot of questions around uh their own intention to do this and never actually uh, come across someone who's uh been very vocal and said that oh this is bizarre <laughs> like they've always been very supportive so current in terms of uh monthly expenditure uh, uh prior to taking a retirement and the retirement period 
uh, has your expenses gone down or has it remained same or has it increased uh, how does it look like actually i would say it's the same for the simple reason the headings have changed uh the other day when we were talking i was talk- i was telling you about that in bombay uh the the rentals are high so when i was working we were based in bombay now i'm based in delhi so the rentals would be a big component of the expense now that i'm in delhi it's my own home the rental component goes away but then there's a new heading that's got added which is travel so uh on balance the expense structure is the same just that it's just different headings uh by the way I mean uh, people you know don't tend to look at this calculation uh, so if someone is paying i mean it makes sense to pay rental i come from that school anyway that it makes sense to pay rental in in bombay because the rental yield is barely 2% it's like less than a savings account so pay the rent uh but then if you add the taxes at the highest level so literally rent and taxes takes away 50% of the salary that you get or maybe even 55% yeah so, so just to simplify you don't this really for our need to earn yeah so just to simplify this we had yeah. discussed this right current saying if somebody is earning a crore then yeah yeah, yeah. assuming he spends around 1.5 lakh in in uh, renting an apartment which a person earning 1 That's crore right. would easily want to stay in a decent place so uh, 1.5 into 12 would, would be how yeah, how much i would say any correct there will be about 18 eight, to 20 eight, lakh is uh, 20 lakh already gone yeah yeah may add another 30 lakh yeah. and the uh, gone on tax so 50 50% to vesic it's, uh, it's gone right yeah so i'm saying i don't have those expenses now so uh, the point i was trying to make is you don't need to earn one cr then you can take that one to be you know whatever uh, but you don't need to be, because 50% of those costs don't exist now makes right? sense so uh, yeah as long as the revenue lines from the investments are decent and the investments have been made well and there's a predictable kind of systematic withdrawal plan uh then you can kind of work around the the monthly expenses and stuff like that and uh, and again I, i also want to be very very clear about this 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 is a discussion I have with my advisor very often. I don't talk about I'm not so concerned about the markets as much as I'm concerned about overall direction of the portfolio. Because a portfolio composition will define whether it's the you know whether the XIRR or the returns are 12% or 14%. Markets will play a very small role. It's the it's the way the portfolio is designed. current how is your retirement corpus divided now so when i was working uh i was 100% in equities and zero in fixed income and i'm perfectly fine with the risk that comes with volatility i've never had issues with volatility whether it was 2008 or you know 2020 um but now now that now that uh i don't have a source of income which is money related uh, like a salary my advisor has made that corpus 70 30 uh 17 in favor of equity and 13 in favor of fixed income guild guild fund okay. and i'm perfectly fine with that now that's a decision he has taken so kind of my final question is what are some misconceptions around this concept of uh financial independence and retire early i think people simply believe that retiring means a zero active life in fact i think for me after retirement my active life is has soared to a different level altogether i i genuinely uh, i'm super active during the day because like i said there's so much uh, work around going to the gym and playing a sport and then studying i think the biggest misconception is retirement means inactivity for me retirement means complete activity it's just a different sort of activity 
and the other misconception is that you need tons and tons of money for it uh, i don't think that's true <laughs> yeah i mean you, uh, I you was... do need a corpus you need you need the essentials but oh, yeah i was talking to one guy and he said he also retired early so he said uh, there should be a combination of these two if you want to retire uh, uh, early first is if you don't like your job if you don't like working there second is that job should be high paying you know so that you <laughs> it was kind of like a joke saying the job has to be mm-hmm. high paying whatever you're working in but you don't like it so that's when you retire that's uh, actually i do agree with that i'll tell you uh, the thing is that so many friends now very close friends are continuing to work even they don't like it and they have the money to walk off but they just lack the courage to do so perhaps they don't know what to do with the time etc etc but there's much there's so much more to do than uh, yeah there's a lot to do yeah so with that uh, karan thank you so much for coming to the why not men money show and i thank hope you. to see you in some other episode again thank you so much yes yes it's my pleasure thanks so much thanks for having me that brings us to the end of today's episode if you would like to know more about this topic then you can reach out to me on twitter i go by the username at the red session nj or linkedin using my full name that is session ningthao kongjam we would be happy to take your suggestions that's all from our side thanks for tuning in see you in the next episode to stay updated on this podcast follow us at hd smartcast on all the major social media platforms to listen to more such podcasts log on to www.hdsmartcast.com